All right. Hi, everybody. We are live. This is the eTourism Summit See Tomorrow series. Um, conversation number, I'm not even sure, but the point is we're excited to have you all here today. Um, we have MMGY Brandon Billings um, in several destinations, as you can see on your screen, from around the country who will be joining in today's conversation, which is really exciting. It's about harnessing social to fuel the travel recovery. And um, it's, it's a kind of a different topic than we've had before. So I'm really excited to kind of get new perspective on a new, a new subject matter. Um, before we jump in though, I did want to mention a couple of things. Um, MMGY is also sponsoring the eTourism Summit Emerging Tourism Stars Program. It's a new program that eTourism Summit launched just this year. Um, applications are currently open, nominations. We encourage you to nominate uh, anyone who's really just a standout star at your destination. Um, fairly new to the travel industry, we do ask that there's no age limit requirement. Um, the really you know, good thing is it's just someone who's killing it day to day. It could be a social media manager, right? Relevant to this conversation or really just anyone at your destination. So I encourage you to check out more about the Emerging Tourism Stars program on our eTourismSummit.com website. Um, another cool thing that eTourism Summit is um, known for and one of our awesome things that uh, Lori Jo Miller Farr puts together every week is the Travel Vertical. Um, that is a free e-newsletter. Um, in addition to that, we also recently launched the Travel, Travel Vertical podcast that Lori and Adam Stoker from Relic co-host every other week. So a new episode just uh, launched today. So again, check that out on the travelvertical.com. And then lastly, we just hope to see you all um, at the eTourism Summit in person, September 20th through 22nd in Las Vegas. We could not be more excited, as I'm sure most of you are, just to see each other in real life, um, just, you know, handshakes or not, whatever you feel comfortable with, but we are just excited to see your faces. So really check that out, um, encourage you to register, and um, yeah, hope to see you there. But without further ado, I wanna go ahead and kick it over um, to Brandon, and he's going to start the conversation today. Thank you so much, Brandon and MMGY, for sponsoring today. We are really excited to have you all here. Thanks, Becca. You know, I think we're as excited, I think, as we've kind of led up to this. I, I definitely think there's an excitement that we're all feeling across the industry. You know, you're feeling travel starting to come back. Um, you know, within this panel, you have Kim Sidoriak with uh, Santa Monica Travel and Tourism, Matt Sheaf with Rhode Island Commerce, and then Courtney Hersel with the beaches of Fort Myers and Sanibel. So really a nice mix of audiences and how do we start to talk? Um, what do we look at? What are some of the indices as we think about social as well as travel and how it's starting to rebound? Again, we'll talk through some of the record numbers we're seeing. From a format standpoint, just for, to kind of anchor ourselves, you know, we're gonna start with a little bit off the top. We wanna talk quickly um, through what is the data, data telling us? We have to be rooted in where's it going and how do we really use data-driven insights and research to really inform our success board? Then we're definitely gonna jump into that panel discussion, have great conversations, um, a lot of wonderful questions. And then as we kind of wrap up the end, really allowing time for the audience, for you, the audience, to then come in and ask the questions that you want. So I'm gonna take the first part and I'm gonna share my screen. Um, and just kind of talk a little bit about what are we seeing today? So again, as Becca said, we're focused so much on harnessing social and the, 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 to fuel travel recovery forward. Um, but again, just kind of where are we? What are we seeing? What is the data telling us? Um, you know, one of the things we've longstanding um, from MMGY, we do a traveler sentiment index. And what this tells us is it measures interest and overall intent to travel. You know, within this chart, you see that sharp, sharp decline as we moved into the pandemic. But then you see this amazing lift, this recovery um, as we move now into recovery. Um, looking at these numbers, you know, we're seeing numbers that we've never seen before. Um, you know, 35 points we've led from a recovery standpoint in just those nine months. To put this in perspective, um, it took almost six years to grow 36 points following the 2008-2009 financial crisis. So to say there's travel demand, travel intent, that people are excited that when they were told they couldn't travel, you're definitely seeing this now in terms of they can and here's where it's going. Um, you know, 
just looking again here, just a couple, across a couple different sources, you know, everyone is planning travel. The gates are open. You know, 89% of Americans, American travelers have at least a tentative trip plans right now. 67% of American travelers are planning to travel this summer. 62% of American travelers are planning to travel over the next six months. I mean, I think we're all there. We're even starting, you know, as, as from MMGY standpoint, really looking at offices around you know North America and the globe, how do we make sure that we're touching base with our offices? So I was also how are we starting to look at business travel? Um, one of the things that we really anchor ourselves in, I think we have the traditional side of research with MMGY and so much robust information there, but also how do we start to leverage real-time data informed through listening? Um, we work with NetBase Quid, which is an enterprise level social listening platform. Um, we, as we think about how do we start to approach, what is that social voice of travelers? So really understanding what's, what's the makeup, what what are they talking about? What's the sentiment analysis? We're the official provider um, to US Travel Association, their travel recovery dashboards, and really just, again, just understanding not only what are they talking about broadly, but what are they talking about at a, at a destination level? So really using AI insights. Um, so what is it saying? So this is a chart um, and, it's, and it's pretty amazing. We pulled this just recently and I started to pull this and I was talking with some teams and I'm like, why are we seeing the crying emoji? I've seen the crying emoji for the last 13 months. If I see that one more day, I'm done. And as we start to lean into the data, we start to understand what it's telling us. And it's not the crying emoji, it's the tears of joy. People are literally using the tears of joy emoji to really express the excitement that travel is back, that they can travel. And I think emojis are such a critical element as you start to analyze you know, it's there's you put so much thought into which emoji you're using that I just think this is such a clear indicator. The other thing that we really looked at is travel engagement uh, across social. And again, this is around people sharing their, you know, social voice of travel. These are consumers um, really getting down to that route. But you see that 94 percent increase month over month in travel engagement. What this tells us is the days of travel shaming are far behind us and everybody is celebrating and embracing each other's travel. Um, it's just such a, I mean, from where we were this time last year to where we are today, I think we're all, dry, we're all having those, those tears, um, you know, crying for, crying for joy. Um, the other thing, just as we think about where social moving forward, you know, we definitely saw a huge surge in social in 2020, you know, really across all ma major platforms. You saw platforms such as TikTok just see phenomenal success and grow forward. What we're also seeing is that while we will see a slight decrease, the demand is still carrying forward. Social is still that, that core channel that's really allowing us to connect with our audience and so that people are you know, just absorbing so much content. And I think just really excited about where it's going. The other thing that we're also seeing is, you know, we've talked about content creators with influence and how are we starting to use those? You're seeing marketers continue to prioritize as an opportunity to tell their story. So it's not just about the brands telling their story, but how do they activate these content creators with influence, really using tools to really understand even from almost a, a paid media reverse lookup, do their audiences match up with who we are? Um, but you're starting to see this huge shift um, really in paid budgets where so much is now being put forth towards this paid influencers and branded content program. So, you know, that's that that's all the kind of the, the dog and pony show we have on that. We now want to really get into those questions. So just kind of starting off from a group standpoint, you know, where are each of you right now as we think about travel recovery across your destination? Courtney, do you want to start with this one? Sure. Um, so the way that we approached um, our recovery plan at the beaches of Fort Myers and Sanibel was a four phase approach. So first um, phase being wait, second being ready, third being set, and the fourth being go. So right now we're kind of lingering in the set phase um, as people are getting more comfortable being out in public. Um, maybe people are already traveling and they're thinking and already in the mindset of trip planning. So um, we're kind of in that set phase right now within our recovery plan and um, just adapting daily on, you know, what the different sentiments are. Matt, do you want to take next? Sure. So we are we are all systems go. Um, throughout the pandemic, we have kept in always on approach to promoting Rhode Island and it's, it to come visit in a safe way. Um, focusing on a drive market. And uh, beginning this Friday, we will be at 100% capacity across all of our industry sectors. And so staying on throughout the pandemic in a smart way, saving resources and using them strategically has let us um, be able to, to approach this moment of being on and open and really maximize to get our travelers to bring our summer back. Kim? 
So in Santa Monica, um, we are doing um, full campaign advertising um, launched in April. Um, California had stay at home orders in place until early January. So this last year has been very fluid and very start and stop um, oriented. But in terms of hotel performance, um, we're seeing occupancy rise steadily since January um, and um, rate maintaining a pretty strong rate, but definitely looking at a very strong summer. Um, I think there's a perception uh, in the country of California being more restricted and more closed. Um, so we really um, have to do a lot of work to, to fight that. But um, as of June 15th, California will kind of go to a no restrictions phase. Um, so definitely looking for a strong summer. Yeah, it's amazing just to see as everybody, I mean, the, the sentiment across is strong summer, strong summer, strong summer, and ready to go. Okay, um, getting into more of the, the social question. So understanding that social required quick turn pivots over the past 15 months, what are the key areas you adapted your social media strategies to help drive recovery? Uh, Matt, you want to take this one first? Sure. So we we focused on always keeping Rhode Island uh, front and center and promoting Rhode Island and the things we were doing uh, in a safe way. So when the government put in restrictions and, and switched to maybe just outdoor dining instead of indoor, we had to quickly respond to that. And so we we launched an effort uh, called Take It Outside, and we switched our social platforms and our website to be a one-stop resource so folks can see, here are ideas and things you can do in Rhode Island this weekend, even though there are these government restrictions out there, there are still things to do safely in our state, and you should still keep it on your mind as you're getting stir crazy in the house and come experience. And so as the, the rules changed weekly, sometimes it seemed weekly, sometimes daily, uh, we had to be nimble and agile to continue to make sure what we were offering was also up to date so people had the expectations of what they get when they were here. I'll also say we quickly shift, shifted when a mask mandate in place went in place to have the creative we were putting out there reflect what was actually on the ground. And so we used uh, local influencers, I know we're going to talk about this in a bit, to get us user-generated content wearing masks so that we were uh, promoting what people would see when they actually got here. And you could do your favorite activities still wearing a mask under the, under the guidelines. Kim? Um, so we really shifted our focus into highlighting um, local businesses. Um, one of the campaigns that we created was sort of a how-to Santa Monica video series where Obviously in our roles, we kind of needed to do some PSA work in terms of um, communicating what's expected and what the local regulations are and, and how to go about life in this very unique time. So we balanced that with the need to promote local businesses. So we created a series of videos, um, like how to, how to shop local, how to stay active, how to dine out right now, where tips were shared by local businesses themselves. So they sort of got a free commercial on our platform while we're also cre uh, creating public safety information content. Courtney? Yeah, so I love this question because um, it's interesting to think over the past 15 months, all that has happened, and I'm sure all of us have adapted, like Matt alluded to, on a week basis, on a day-to-day -day basis, and we're still kind of navigating the space. But I think um, the two things that come to mind when I think about our strategy was um, our messaging being adapted, um, pretty much on a daily basis, evaluating that, especially when the pandemic really um, hit hard in the beginning and not really knowing where we where we need to go, what we need to do and say, um, and then just content overall, right? Like, you know, our images, evaluating what images we're sharing, you know, for us, we're located in Southwest Florida and, you know, our beaches are our bread and butter. That's what people come here for. So to share images of people basking on the beaches is not something that would really resonate that um, with people. It was, you know, evaluating how people were feeling, the sentiment around this whole pandemic, everybody feeling so different. So really um, for us um, from, you know, adapting our strategy it was just our content overall, everything from, um, you know, our messages and our text copy to um, advertising, which was something that we pulled um, early on. We, we stopped our paid ads in the beginning. So um, I think just the fact that you know, everything was kind of under a microscope and making sure that um, the content that we're pushing out and the messages that we're sharing with our followers were um, relevant, but also not, hey, look at me, come to the beaches of Fort Myers and Sanibel. It was more about like, 
hey, here's the information that you need right now. Uh, maybe it's time to stay home. Maybe it's time um, you know, to entertain them, which we had some fun campaigns, which I know we'll talk a little bit more about in some of the other questions, but finding ways that we could really just engage with our, our people um, and not make it all about us and getting them to come here. Yeah. And Brandon, it's really interesting where Fort Myers might have downplayed the sandy beaches and whatnot, Rhode Island being nestled between New York and Boston and knowing that people were escaping the big cities. We were targeting those folks to come to Rhode Island. We got 400 miles of coastland. You can get a great deal to work remotely at, at a hotel. And so we played that up. So it, it's interesting to see our, our different regions and the strategies we, we took during COVID to adapt. Yeah, I also, I also think it's interesting, Kim and I were talking a little bit as we were kind of working through, as we as a group were working through, I think the reaction from local businesses and the support that we started to see from them. I know one partner that kind of hit me hard was we saw a comment back from a restaurant and we're asking them to participate in a program. And his comment was, I'm just trying to keep my business afloat. And so much of what we had to anchor our teams in is a, there's a little bit of emotion behind it because these are people that their lives are being uprooted and social allowed us to at least come in there and help them and support and truthfully keep those frontline workers and, you know, and, and really moving that business forward. So I think there's just that emotion. It was such a, I remember I was sitting, working from home. i in the office for right now, uh, but I was working, I remember I was out on my deck reading through emails and I remember reading that email from the restaurant and he's like, I'm just trying to keep my business. I, I appreciate everything you guys are doing. Um, but I think it's it's just such, I, I still thinking about it today. I just think from where his shoes were um, and kind of where that was. So um, next question, um, many destinations move their marketing to a hyper-local focus and supporting businesses to that degree. What types of programming did you develop to support these partners? Uh, let's go with uh, Courtney. Um, so from our perspective, um, within like our overarching campaign, we really didn't focus too much on, um, you know, like promoting local businesses and things like that. I think um, we did have some initiatives where we, um, we focused a little bit more on, this was further, further down the line, um, into our recovery plan, um, promoting um, drive markets, really focusing on um, content that was targeted to, um, you know, other areas within the state of Florida, and also working with some influencers that um, promoted, um, you know, driving to the destination, which is something that we've never really placed a focus on before. Um, but in terms of um, specific, like, local businesses, uh, we didn't have too much of a focus there, but just really trying to um, amplify the idea of bringing people to the destination um, within drive markets. Matt? So we partnered with a local business called Dell's Lemonade, um, and uh, it's a frozen treat. And uh, if you come to Rhode Island, which I would like you to do, uh, you don't need a straw when you eat your Dell's. Um, but our premise was uh, make lemons out of lemonade. And so uh, Dell's partnered with us. We sent some of uh, these Dell's boxes to some of our key media and also some of our local influencers. Uh, we also did a, a, a hyper-local campaign called Roadie Resilient to kind of rally the Rhode Island community together to know that together we're gonna get through this. Uh, and so we had some t-shirts made. Uh, we had masks made with the Roadie Resilient. We gave them away through our social media channels. And as I was referring to earlier, we also sent them to some of our, our local uh, influencers so that we could get some user generated content out of it as well. And then Kim. So our recovery campaign that um, really got going uh, late last summer is called San Monica Shines and it included paid advertising, social, et cetera. But one main component from a local business standpoint was our Santa Monica Shines Assurance Program. Um, so essentially the, uh, a, an assurance program that unofficially certified businesses to um, ensure that they were following all health protocols established by Los Angeles County Public Health, um, but also in partnering with our local community college and a local um, private training company, creating a customer service training um, for empathy and, and understanding COVID as well as um, an on-site visit um, through a contractor with our local community college to answer questions and provide resources to businesses. As a founding partner for that program, um, our organization kind of took the marketing arm of that. So um, we promote uh, each, each week, whatever the latest Shines Assured Business grouping is, we promote that 
heavily on our Instagram channel, um, our social channels, email, website, et cetera. Um, and that's also a catalyst to get more businesses to go through the program because they're um, being promoted off of our channels, which is you know, a, a way to capture a larger audience than those businesses can do for themselves. That's amazing. Um, next question here. Part of the role of social really has been to maintain a presence and help inspire hope. I think that's part of, you know, as we think about how do we drive in inspiration to keep the brands relevant, to keep the destinations. So as we move through the year, so what types of responses um, have you seen from your audiences? Kim, do you want to take this one? Yeah, I mean, going back to the local business standpoint, that was really um, a, a wonderful thing for us to see that what we were doing in terms of promoting local businesses and engaging with them on social, um, we really saw that like instant reward of, of the, the businesses coming back and resharing what we were sharing about them and, and just wonderful to see, um, you know, how appreciative they were and how to see that relationship in a digital world. Um, just sort of new, new deliverables as a, as a service provider to businesses. Um, but then definitely uh, for the folks who are following us or who are further away, um, you know, we kind of balance that need of, okay, let's communicate how to visit safely, what the experience looks like right now, but let's not forget that this is a destination that can be a restorative experience for folks. So when they're ready, uh, you know, coming to the, to the beach and to the coast and getting out of their, their four walls of their house, um, having that inspirational, aspirational content out there balanced with the tactical, <laughs> here's what you can do, here's what you can't do. Um, so I think the balance of uh, the engagement from the customer who's looking for that inspiration and then also um, seeing the engagement from the businesses themselves and just, just being grateful for uh, what we're doing for them. Excellent. Courtney? Yeah, I think our response um, was just really positive overall. I think we have a lot of people that are very passionate about our destination um, that you know were sad that they couldn't visit or they had to cancel trips and um, some of the things that uh, we promoted on social media, we did a um, island show and tell series where we partnered with um, a local um, captain who takes people on amazing adventures, but he also creates some great content himself. Um, he was basically the voice sharing just um, in, in the summer months, we have um, tropical fruit season. So we have um, amazing mangoes that grow on some of our islands and we have um, incredible seashells that come on Sanibel and for people that aren't able to travel and that are missing, um, you know, their vacations and that are missing the sunshine and missing that feeling of getting away. It was almost just a little way that we could offer these um, just little glimpses from a local point of view um, into, you know, these vacations into, into the places that they couldn't, you know, visit at the time. So, um, and I think, you know, people being able to see that all we would get was I'm, I'm thank you so much. Thank you so much for sharing this. We miss you. Um, you know, a lot of people are stuck at home with their kids and a lot of these videos had a little bit of an educational component to them too. So it was almost like edutainment for their families as well. So we saw a really positive response overall and it was just great to have those types of conversations with people, um, you know, really getting social on social media and getting back to the roots of, you know, what we do and why we do it. Matt? I'll just say uh, the tourism and hospitality sector is such a major driver of our local economy. And so uh, when folks think of Rhode Island, we think of the beaches in the summertime and, and people come here for those. And so we don't really have to promote it for the summer. But our effort in, in COVID or non-COVID times is to get visitors here for the fall, the winter and the spring to keep the businesses supported. So one of the initiatives that we did at, at the state is we invested some of our federal stimulus dollars to help bring more activities outside. I'm talking like literally building an outside uh, ballet stage so we could have the Nutcracker outdoors, funding blankets for restaurants so that they could have dinners eat outside, paying for It's a Wonderful Life to be broadcast on the radio. And so keeping some, some things in a more, in a, it's, I hate to say the word normal, but because none of this was normal, but having activities so that people could do which sustains business activity and, and keeps people employed, the response we received on social media, not just sharing pictures and selfies from these things, but the thank yous was, was, was so rewarding. And a lot of these outside trends that we've established are going to continue, uh, it seems, so that one positive that's come out of this. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. I mean, just in terms of how business has shifted and how, you know, 
even the little things, um, I think we're just such a positive. Um, you know, we talked about influencers and content creators. Um, what are some of the things, you know, I think as they've come in and been a central part of our messaging um, and allowing them to kind of own some of the voice and carry that forward and helping tell our destination. You know, have you used them to develop unique content? Can you guys talk a little bit about that? Matt, do you want to start? Sure. So I, I mentioned it a couple of times we used our user generated content to uh, highlight and promote what what it actually looks like on the ground in Rhode Island. So it was the pictures of the mask wearing. It was the roadie resilient T-shirts. It was showing that you can still go for a, a hike in the woods or you could you could visit this outdoor attraction. And so uh, our user generated content actually did quite well. We were able to drive nearly uh, 15,000 impressions, over 200 link clicks, just from a group of 35 influencers, local influencers that we had. And if you add it together with our other UGC assets that we had the community sending to us, uh, we had over just nearly 400,000 engagements and 37.4 million impressions. And so, uh, and this is content that we're going to continue to use in our upcoming campaigns and are using right now. And uh, in the age we're in, people like real like local not staged and so th this is this is where we're going and it, it was great to to be able to use it and have it courtney yeah so we um we really had to rethink our influencer program right so uh there was a couple different things we got to do which was like it was just really cool to see our um this program our influencer program adapt and actually create something really amazing, which you know maybe we would have never um, had the chance to um, partner with them in this capacity. So um, for example, we did Beach Ready Spirit Week. So um, just to give a little bit background, this was essentially you know a time where our influencers were not able to travel here, able to create content here on the ground in Fort Myers and Sanibel. So instead we, we tried to create a really fun, um, engaging way to get people wherever they were at their homes um, across the country, they could participate in various challenges. So one week it was show your beach, um, your beach wear, your tackiest beach wear. One, one week it was um, inspired by um, show us our, your beachside bites. So featuring different foods around the destination um, and then at home beach retreat. So we actually got this idea. We had um, a German family actually recreate one of our tiki bars that reside on Fort Myers Beach and they sent pictures in they it was almost like an exact replica of one of our beach bars which was amazing and just spoke to how much people really were missing visiting us and just getting out of their houses so um, it was really fun because we got to partner with influencers that didn't actually have to come here to the destination but we had you know four different weeks with four different themes and we targeted influencers and people that had um, you know, great reach across these different areas, whether it was food, culinary, um, uh, interior design, um, anything like that. So it was, it was really fun because in addition to us pushing out all of these fun challenges on our social media channels, we had these other um, influencers um, pushing it out on theirs as well to increase reach. And it was more about just having fun and engaging with people in a time where they may not have you know, much to do and they can't really go anywhere, but still keeping the destination top of mind in a fun way. Kim? Um, so I definitely agree with Matt that the that influencers is really um, going to be a key component of, of marketing destinations um, as we move forward. I mean, if you think about uh, the level of investment that we make in, in public relations and, and journalist familiarization tours and what you can get out of influencers just in terms of rich content. Um, it's really, it's really amazing. Um, so for the city of Santa Monica, they established a, an economic recovery task force and, and um, folks from my organization are on the outreach committee for that. So last uh, winter holiday season, um, we did host a few influencers to focus on shopping local for the holidays. Um, so entertained a few influencer visits and just in working with our local business improvement districts, getting the influencers out into those business improvement districts, showing what they shop for, what's unique gifts for this year, what is, uh, you know, what are gifts that are responsive to folks working from home, where can you find these items. Um, so that was a very like quick return, um, you know, local feel good stories. 
Um, and then as we run our, our, our full recovery campaign now with paid advertising, we are looking forward to hosting a couple of influencers over the next two months, um, kind of targeting further, further away markets um, and really looking forward to creating rich itineraries. And again, the, the content that we'll be able to get out of these influencers, we're really looking forward to, to seeing that come to life. Yeah, it's pretty amazing the the content that you get. I think part of as we start to analyze again is just we almost look at them from a from a paid media side of a reverse lookup, and we have tools in place that we use to just understand who is the dynamic. You know, there's kind of the the quant side and the qual side as you think about influencers and what's the content that you're going to get. But it's definitely something we're seeing continue um, and pretty aggressive, aggressively if we set off the top. I think one of the things we talked about, um, you know, as we think about what are some of the social platforms that you're seeing the most success in driving growth and speeding recovery? I think, you know, you've seen the emergence somewhat of TikTok, but you still have your tried and true with Facebook and Instagram. So just to open that up to the audience. Matt, do you want to start? Sure. So Facebook continues to be our biggest driver of traffic and engagement, and it's our heaviest budget on the paid social front. But I will say, uh, you know, being home on the couch, scrolling through TikTok, I, I have tried making the chaffles and learning the dances, and I won't do that so I don't scare the audience here. Um, but we did branch out and launch a TikTok channel, and uh, it took off and has been very successful. And one of the things that we used on TikTok is we did a hotel week here in Rhode Island. So we did a two weeks for hotel week where we had uh, hotels across the state uh, from our high, high, high end luxury hotels to our, our, our low and budget hotels set a fixed price, which we target. And so we targeted to Rhode Island, Rhode Islanders to give themselves a staycation and, and encourage out-of-state folks to come here and visit safely as a way to help boost our, our hotel numbers. But uh, it, we launched this campaign on TikTok for Hotel Week, and it, and it's tick, uh, it has really taken off, and I'm, we're going to continue investing in it. And uh, just over, since we launched it just a couple months ago, we already have 2,000 followers to the account, over 2.5 million video views, and nearly 50,000 engagements with people duetting our clips. Uh, and so I'm, I'm excited to see where that's going to go from here. Definitely fun. Kim? So um, for us, the platforms that we're seeing um, the most success in is, is Instagram followed by Facebook. Um, in terms of emerging channels, as we look to hosting um, this next batch of influence over, uh, influencers over the last the next couple of months, we're looking to leverage their established platforms because we're not on uh, the platforms like TikTok just yet, but looking at as we're negotiating with them in terms of deliverables, is there content that you'll be generating on TikTok? And is that a way for us to kind of step in and, and dip our toes into that, that market? So, Courtney? Yeah, so um, I mean, our fo focus is typically just Facebook and Instagram. I mean, we do, we do have Twitter and Pinterest and, and other areas, but I think our tried and true is Facebook and Instagram. Um, we are always, you know, considering the new platforms, especially with everything this past year, TikTok did blow up. So Matt, I'm really, I'm really curious. Um, and I can't wait to look at your TikTok account, but you know, we kind of are always keeping these things um, on our radar and evaluating, you know, is our target audience there? Do we have the manpower to manage that another account and, and things like that? So I'd be curious, like, I mean, it sounds like you're having great success. Um, I guess, how do you, how did that come about? And how did you, um, I don't know, I guess get the buy-in to start something like that. Cause you know, we're always keeping these things on, you know, in, in our minds, but it's like, you know, to actually move forward with something like that from a destination standpoint is really unique. I, I so it literally the idea came about when I myself was bored, locked in the house and, and scrolling through the TikTok and I got the message pop up saying, hey, I think you spent a little too much time looking at videos. <laughs> And then uh, I talked with our team, but you're right, Courtney, you, if you're gonna start into one of these new platforms, you have to make the commitment to keep it updated, have staff for it, have fresh content, and you have to stick with it and to see if it's gonna go. And so, uh, Brandon, I think, uh, I think the three of us destinations should do uh, uh, some type of stitched TikTok video together uh, when they join the platform. <laughs> 
Yeah, it's, it's definitely, it, I'll tell you, one of the methodologies I have around travel is travel needs to be a fast follower in terms of where other market demand is driving. You see, we don't have the, the budgets of, a, of some of the financial industry, some of the automotive. And I think, A, I think influencers allow us to tip into that a little bit um, and see, you know, let's test it with influencers. Let's make it part of a overarching program that that's one element and we start to see what success looks like. Um, I think those are the things that as we think about rolling out programs and I, I think social allows you to test and learn and be you know nimble in what you do. Um, so I just think it's I think it's um, it's interesting as that moves. I was listening to social media week um, over the last couple of weeks ago and a lot of brands were talking about how they're really starting to dip into TikTok even more and more. I think part of it is just being authentic. And you have to be able to, what I've always said is you've got to feed the beast that is social and you've got to be committed to driving content. So I think that's, that's the other side um, in driving that forward. The other interesting thing on content is we all know that audience's attention span to getting is, you know, seven seconds, 11 seconds. And so pre COVID we had a, what we call a fun size campaign where our videos were literally seven seconds. And I think the TikTok audience and the way the platform itself is you get 15 seconds to your shortest video it, it it's the attention span of our audience these days and it's a great way to hit them yeah so as we think about prioritizing social um 15 months we've talked a little bit about that but anything else to add from this group in terms of how are they prioritizing social board how does that you know evaluation over the lasting 15 months of what we've learned um kim do you want to start yeah, I mean, I think, you know, there are things that we did on social these last 15 months that we never did pre pandemic. Um, you know, one of the things being engaging and, and utilizing uh, Instagram stories, uh, you know, we just didn't have the staff staff resources to be on uh, Insta stories all the time. So I think that those are the, the lessons learned in terms of what you can utilize stories for that it doesn't have to be this like very polished pieces of, of content and um, even from a crisis communication standpoint, we were able to see, okay, if the city, for example, or the police department needs us to communicate and, and support public outreach efforts, Twitter and Insta stories are a really easy, clear way to do that. Um, so in terms of looking looking forward, I think it's just kind of utilizing um, all, the, all the pieces of the toolbox um, moving forward and, and again, looking at influencers, what they can do um, in, in engaging external audiences and, and really continuing to share and amplify the influencer voices and amplify the local business voices. Courtney? Yeah, we definitely will be prioritizing video moving forward. Um, I think we found great value in that um, throughout the past 15 months, you know, using a variety of different types of videos, whether they were um, our local brand ambassadors or just um, reusing a lot of just destination beautiful. We did beach breaks. There was a bunch of beach breaks. There was um, for this one, it was um, DIY, like how to make Boca Punch. People were stuck at home. Let's give them something to do. Um, uh, all destination inspired, but um, lots of video content that we saw great engagement with. And I think video is, you know, blown up pre pandemic. And I think it continues to just be a great engaging way, um, you know, to, involve people on social media. So definitely video and um, continuing to um, harness our uh, social media influencers for sure. I think they might look a little different, but um, we're excited to you know be able to have people start traveling here. We worked with two influencers so far this year and working to bring in a few more. Um, so just excited to leverage that again and um, you know have people come here and create unique um, content on the ground. So. Yeah. I just want to echo what Courtney says about video. And the great thing is the iPhones, the quality that you can capture right on an iPhone is so good. And, and uh, that, that you can, with some simple editing skills, or you can really have fresh content and fresh videos at the palm of your hand. You don't have to do the old school way of hiring a videographer to come out and, and shoot and stage. Um, so I think the technology helps with that work, you know, uh, we're going to continue to this TikTok trend and see where it takes us at least through the summer and into the fall. If, if, the, if as the economy starts to reopen and people are traveling, if the TikTok is still uh, getting the numbers that we're seeing, then we will continue with it. And then, of course, Facebook, we're going to stick with because that is our, our best platform. Yeah, and I, I think it's interesting. You're seeing 
you're seeing a lot of buzz around Clubhouse. At least you were probably a couple of weeks in to go, and now you're seeing some pretty significant drop off in terms of some of those downloads. Um, we, from an organization standpoint, from a social standpoint, haven't dipped our toe too much into that yet, just because we need to prioritize resourcing. Anything from the group to add on that? That's kind of an add in question. Nothing from us on Clubhouse. Heard a lot about it, but haven't really dove too deep there. We haven't either. You know, sometimes it's nice to be the first in in the water, uh, but I think here in Rhode Island, with our with our ad dollars and marketing dollars being so constrained, but just how we're funded, we have to go with what's going to get us the best return on our ad spend. And Clubhouse didn't seem worth it to us. And we're not dipping our toes just yet, but probably in looking at any of the emerging platforms, our, our way in will be through partnerships with influencers or partnerships with other brands who are there. Yep. Yeah, and in terms of like recovery, I think for us too, our mindset has always been, we, we can't be everywhere and everything to everyone. So, you know, really focusing on those platforms that um, we know do really well and perform really well that we know our target audience is on and focusing on that. But not to say we don't keep an eye on those things. And I know MMGY is always keeping us up to speed on everything, but um, yeah, Clubhouse is not on the list right now. I just think that there's just a lot of chatter. Um, and that's yeah. where we are. Um, cool. Um, so understanding that engagements, you know, as we think about, as we talked about that 94% and earlier, you know, engagements are really that clear indicator of travel intent. What are some of the key metrics across social you are using to really inform business success to your destination? Kim, do you want to start us off here? Sure. I mean, you know, just in looking at our first month of advertising campaign reporting, I think it really opened my eyes to um, how we need to re reimagine um, campaign performance reporting because social was sort of a smaller piece of it. But, um, you know, in, in having a conversation with our media team, it was like, okay, like, who's really signing up for like consumer email blasts from a destination anymore? You know, is, is following a social account a stronger intent of potential travel and is engaging on a social platform a stronger intent to travel? Um, I think we've all known that um, the, the path to travel is very scattered now. You're on a destinations website, you're on a hotel website, you're on a booking engine, you're on various social channels. So I think um, it really has opened my eyes into social, social needs to play a larger role in determining what intent looks like and what those KPIs need to be moving forward. Matt? So we, you know, we track all the standard data, click-through rates, engagement, but uh, I, I'm not sure how my, my colleagues are, but we are a quasi-public government entity. And so we are funded by hotel tax revenue. And so uh, we have to justify uh, that we're getting a return on our ad spend. So we actually, on top of those traditional metrics, we use Adara and we actually embed a cookie onto our ads. And so we are able to see if someone clicks the ad uh, and then books a hotel room. Uh, and those are, are critical metrics from us because then we can determine how much revenue hotels have brought in and, and the return on our ad spend. And so uh, just given that we are a, a government entity, that's, that's important for us to track. Courtney? Yeah, we're very similar, Matt. We're a government entity as well and funded on bed tax. Um, in terms of social metrics, I think, um, again, you know, all of the the major things everybody tracks, um, but I think it's important um, through the pandemic, um, you know, looking at our engagements. Of course, it's not going to be apples to apples comparing year over year and things like that, but I think it was just really interesting um, seeing those engagements um, almost on like a deeper level, not just looking at the numbers, but looking at, okay, what, what are those types of, like, what are people saying in the comments? What are people saving on Instagram and, and liking and things like that? Um, I think one of the things that popped up for us was on Instagram, Instagram, those saves. And I, and that was just really eye opening for us because it's like people wanted to come back and see that content. They were inspired by that. And when, maybe when it's time for them to plan a trip, they want to, you know, come back to that and maybe we're in their consideration set. So I think diving a little deeper into the engagements was really interesting. Um, but, you know, I think it's something that we just have to keep a pulse on, but it's also, you know, changing so much just with everything given, you know, the pandemic, but um, it's, I think, going to be interesting moving forward, especially with this pent-up travel demand, just 
um, seeing those numbers probably kind of go through the roof in the coming months. But um, I think engagements is something that we really place a big emphasis on. Yeah, it's interesting. One of the things that's always interesting is listening, we can get to it. And also just through, uh, there's also a manual element, I think that ties in with engagements and just understanding what are people talking about? I think is they're sharing your post board, are they tagging people? Are they talking about it? Um, you know, I've gone through listening and, you know, you'll see the, what's, what's the conversation snapshot. So what's not the many, but what's the few that are really the indicator that from an insights and, you know, way forward plan really provides you that, Hey, this is what people are really talking about. That's impactful to us. So I think, I think it's just so much of really, again, kind of that left brain, right brain where, where emotion starts to come in and what you're starting to see there. So I, I just think it's interesting as for a collective group. Uh, next question here, are you starting to look at pulling forward? Um, some of those pre-pandemic social strategies. So understanding, you know, we looked at some of the data, we talked about record numbers, you all understand where summer's going, but what are some of those, does, what are some of those pre-pandemic strategies that you're looking to pull in as um, things return and those um, travel numbers get back to more of that normal travel marketing, I guess. Uh, Matt, do you want to start? Sure. So Hotel Week was kind of our first foray, dipping our toe back into the pre-pandemic tactics. You know, when the during the pandemic, we had being blessed to be in the Northeast, we have, you know, eight states within our drive range around us. So our effort was called Hit the Open Road, R-H-O-D-E. And all of our advertising was focused on where could people drive from to stay overnight. Um, but now that we are opening back up uh, and, and the trends are showing that uh, folks are more comfortable taking a flight and, and flight bookings are back up, we are also going to be shifting into some of the destination marketing from our direct fly market. So uh, I think there is actually a direct flight from Fort Myers to Providence TF Green. So Courtney, we might be advertising it in your neck of the woods to get some of your folks up here. That's awesome. That sets you up, Courtney. Uh, yeah. Next. <laughs> Um, I think some of the things that we're, we're able to do now um, that we weren't able to do before, which I'm excited about, is just um, sharing our uh, UGC content. Um, you know, visitors are coming back, visitors are here, and they're sharing their images again. And for that, you know, a really long lull there, we didn't have content from people because they weren't coming here, but we also didn't want to showcase our destination as some place where people should be traveling to. So I think, I think it's really exciting that, you know, we're seeing people return and we're seeing people posting about their trips and how amazing they are. And so we're able to reshare that and inspire, you know, other travelers and things like that. Um, the other thing I think too, is just messaging in general, you know, before it was very inspirational, um, you know, just keeping the lights on, if you will. And now it's more about inspiring people for a future trip and really showing the experiences and the open spaces, the beautiful beaches, you know, all that we have to offer um, and experience and, and really, you know, showcasing why we're such a great place for people to get away after all this, you know, pent up um, time <laughs> in their homes. So really excited that we're able to start doing that again. Kim. Um, so two things. One of the things that we're deploying right now in response to um, just understanding that right now and, and over the last two months, I'd say there's a, you know, we're all attracting drive market or within state visitation. So, um, and seeing from our hotel partners that the booking window is really, really short. Um, so uh, looking at the fact that the, the folks coming into our destination might not be taking the time that they did pre-pandemic and planning all aspects. And we all know that that's like a source of of, that's really part of the trip too, and, and something I personally enjoy doing. Um, but with a lot of these last minute trips, we created this um, plan your stay your way campaign. Um, and that's just doing this kind of micro itinerary focus where it's like, okay, if you're into self care and wellness, here's five recos for you. That way you don't have to go to the trip advisor and sift through the blog posts and ask the friends for recommendations. We're kind of here for you. So we're deploying that on a weekly basis according to different interests, whether you're a foodie or a family into wellness and self care or arts and culture. And then one of the things that we're looking at uh, returning to um, Santa Monica's visitor base was about half international. Um, and that's a really good sustainable recipe for our destination. Obviously international travelers stay longer, spend more money and are more likely to use public transportation, which is important for Santa Monica. So um, as we, as the pandemic happened, we were already investing in international markets um, and all of those contracts had to be closed down. So as we're dipping our toe back into 
the international market side of things, it's a very layered approach. It'll start with, um, you know, travel agent training again, what's the latest, what's happening, and then layer on top with public relations and consumer campaigns. Um, but one of the things that I think will be a big focus of ours moving forward is whether we're doing partnership campaigns with airlines or tour operators internationally, um, the social piece of that will be a much bigger priority moving forward. Anybody else on the, I think international is our final question on here. Um, I mean, I will tell you that from our side, we work with a handful of international brands um, on the MMGY side, and we're definitely starting to see some positive movement there. And when things start to open up and um, kind of working through some of that, anything else to add from this group around international? I'll just say we're slowly dipping our toe back in the water, especially for group tours. Um, also, as part of my portfolio, I'm uh, responsible for business attraction with the offshore wind sector in the Northeast playing a big play in the quality of life. And so we're slowly dipping our toes are, you know, it's, there's still restrictions with Canada, which is uh, the closest to us. Uh, so we're planning for it. We're not ready to, to jump in full speed, but we're, we're starting to get ready for it. Yeah, same here. Um, we work with a, a German team and a Canadian team. We actually have designated Facebook pages for um, our Canada market and our Germany. Um, team and you know we're we're definitely talking about a lot of things we've got a lot of things um, in the queue ready to go but just you know waiting for you know the news that you know we could move forward with some of these things but everything's kind of been in a holding pattern for some time I, I think it's I think it's similar to what we were talking about earlier as we think about earlier uh, around the meetings industry and how that starts to come back and when that starts to really kick in I mean I what I've talked about is life in person and there's there's a core element to that in-person element and i think um we're all ready for it um before we go into audience q and i just wanted to open up this I, a i wanted to thank everybody on the panel i i truthfully appreciate you guys are all wonderful partners um and i it was actually been a joy just chatting with each of you as we kind of led up to this so um just opening up um from you all if there's anything else i may have missed or anything else you'd like to add I'll just say here in Rhode Island, one thing I'm, I'm very excited about as is uh, under our governor's leadership, we are we're doing a planning process called Rhode Island 2030. So coming out of the crisis, we're asking Rhode Island and, and all of our business sectors, what do we want Rhode Island to look like in 2030? And the governor specifically looked looking at tourism and hospitality and how do we transition to a full year round destination and, and what do we need to invest in now to make that happen over the next next five, 10 years? And so uh, while I'm excited and, and thrilled that we're back up and running, we're having a great summer, the Newport Folk Fest is going to be music in Newport this summer. I'm also excited for the long-term planning that we're now starting to do uh, to make ourselves more resilient in the future. Actually, I'll jump in on that. Um, Matt, I'm so glad you brought it up because uh, we actually finished a 10-year plan, a 2030 plan, and we're uh, ready to do the community engagement rollout. Uh, in March of 2020. So um, really good opportunity now to look at what in that 10 year plan, um, what are actually some early wins from a destination experience perspective that due to these unprecedented, uh, unprecedented experiences and circumstances um, allowed the policy and, and the red tape to be cleared to support businesses. So that's been fascinating. Um, but now as we kind of re-engage on that long-term plan, we're looking at our city has, a, um, has established their two-year budget priorities. So where do those budget priorities layer in for our long-term plan? And then our downtown business improvement district who um, very well-resourced organization, um, they're looking at a, a stabilization plan. So how can we make this downtown area uh, continue to be a vibrant place and sustainable and how can we make it lively. So layering in what their stabilization plan does for our 2030 plan. So just ensuring that everyone's working together. But um, Matt, I'm happy to talk to you off offline about what 2030 looks like. <laughs> all right. Well, like I said, thank you all very much. Um, as we kind of open it up now to questions, um, and I'll just serve this up to the group. Uh, we have one right now, if I'm doing this right. Hopefully I am, Becca. Um, <laughs> uh, I notice everyone is using stories and even reels in their promotions. Where, where do these fit in both results for you and priority, especially in comparison to the regular feed? I'll just open it up to the group who'd like to answer. I can answer. Um, I think, you know, I mentioned um, utilizing stories. Again, this is something we didn't do 
pre-pandemic, but um, just the ability to get content out there quickly that doesn't have to be branded and polished and perfect. Um, and then again, that that piece of crisis communications of being able to reshare official accounts um, if there are message that, messages that needed to get out. Um, the other thing from a business engagement standpoint um, that was really easy for us to do is just in monitoring what the businesses were posting, we could see themes coming. And so if it was, um, you know, outdoor dining patio season and all the businesses were saying, you know, we're, our patio's open, our patio's open, then we were able to really easily string together a theme and, and again, promote those businesses. So seeing that, you know, from a here's Valentine's specials perspective was really easy to pull together um, and, and display the content in a new way. So I think that there's definitely value. Um, and, and again, that like your feed, you know, oftentimes your feed needs to have a look and feel to it, but the stories can really be, have that like organic feel to it. All right, we have another question in here. Um, do you have tips for very small DMOs with a lack of manpower, um, one employee and a very small budget who are just starting to work um, with influencers? Anybody on the panel want to take this? I'm happy to take as well. I think one thing I would say is focus on um, what you can, like don't try to be everywhere um, on every platform if you don't have the manpower to maintain it. Um, if, you know, if you're finding that your target audience is on Facebook, maybe, you know, spend more time on Facebook. Um, and I think if you have a small budget and you're wanting to work with influencers, maybe there's a way that you could, um, you know, partner with um, a hotel or other local businesses that would be able to kind of come in with you. And that way you're almost spreading it out amongst other partners versus, you know, you having to budget, you know, or pay somebody um, for their services and content creation, because, you know, maybe you bring somebody into the destination, and they're staying at a hotel, and then they're visiting various attractions or doing different experiences, you can get the buy-in from other partners to kind of help you fund that. Um, and that way, it's a shared benefit across all. That's what I was going to say, Brandon, you know, we are we are a small state in Rhode Island, uh, but with a with a big touch. And so I think, you um, focus on on one thing and and get the results from that one area and then branch off into sec to the second thing and uh, let your ads work work for you and let let the algorithms uh, help get your message out there more. Um, maybe you have a, a hospitality association ask them to amplify all of your all of your posts on whatever platform you choose. Um, and, and as Courtney said, maybe there's a business that will, will donate uh, a gift certificate to their restaurant, or maybe it's a hotel wanting to give you uh, a, a free night during the, the week. And, and so then you can do a, a promotion online to get more, more uh, subscribers. So pick one or two things and do them really well and then branch out from there. Yeah. One of the things that I talk to my teams about is and less is more sometimes and figuring out what's going to drive the best results. You know, think about what are the three things you want your audiences to remember and really focus on some of that and how do you lean into those? So definitely kind of that less is more. Um, and I don't think, I think we have time basically for one more question because somehow we're almost out of time. Um, uh, the question around all the new fun that is Apple's new policies. Um, I can start a little bit on this. I think, you know, as we're seeing there's changes coming. Um, we're moving to this cookie-less world. Apple started a lockdown with their new iOS update, some of the things. I would tell you from, from an MMGY social practice, by the end of June, we'll all be Facebook certified from an MMGY social team. And part of that is really understanding how are things changing from a blueprint, from a Facebook blueprint. Um, understanding how are you setting up you know, ad placements? How are you making sure that event tracking is plugged in? How do you make sure that Everything that we can do, we do have in place. And that we're also working with our smart partners to really make sure that we're carrying this through. So um, it's something we as an organization have prioritized forward. And like I said, it's something that we're then starting to stand up. How do we make sure that we're, we can show that certification and what those, I mean, because at the end of the day, we're, we have to be answering those questions and adjusting just as things change, because they always will. All right, well, we're at 57. Becca, I'm not for sure what to do at this point. We could continue for another two hours, but I think our time is up. Yes, we are at our uh, hour mark. I just wanna thank everyone again for joining us today. And um, it was really awesome just to hear from all of you again. 
all destinations from around the country, different viewpoints, but also a lot of similarities that we heard today. We'll be sharing this all um, in an email for all those who registered with top takeaways, as well as a recording um, of this presentation. So we we'll hope to see you again in a couple of weeks when we have a new conversation. Thank you all. Thanks, guys.